Hi, this is Natalie Lander, voice of Kinsey, Tara Brandford, Stargirl, and many others. You are listening to a W2Mnet podcast. You can visit W2Mnet.com for other podcasts about entertainment, video games, sports, and wrestling. You are listening to Video Games to the Max. Hello and welcome to a special edition of Video Games to the Max. And well, Sony provided it. The big moment that we were all waiting for. It was uh, an hour and 15 minutes of a show that really felt like E3. Even though, you know, Sony certainly wanted to let you know that they dropped out. So they delivered the E3 show without actually having to be at E3. And that's what uh, everybody else has to live up to now. With the other shows that are coming uh, later, I am, of course, your host here for this special, Sean Garmer, and here with me, as always, Mr. Mark Morrison. Howdy. And also here, Ian's Dietrich. Hi. And, of course, we had to have Randy Isbell here when we're talking about Sony. Absolutely. Welcome. To, glad to be here. Well, I mean, uh, a game that uh, you guys are, well, three of us, one person doesn't really care. He spoiled himself already. Uh, Last of Us Two has got the godly reviews score right now. Oh, like I mean, 96. I bought it. I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna yeah. play it, even though I've been spoiled on the ending by a. a no, a I meant game. Mark. Even me. who, yeah, who does oh, not I care? Mean, I'll, I'll play it eventually. I'll play it too. I mean, yeah. see, I was, ups- I was super upset about being spoiled on Last of Us Two, and Mark is just like, yep. <laughs> ready. Hey, I, I want to play. I want to play the hot new Mer- uh, Misery Simulator. Okay. Well, it's well, getting good yeah. reviews, which is considering. That it was it's getting, getting really ridiculously weird. great reviews. Except for yeah. GameSpot gave it like an 8, which I thought was funny. <laughs> well, an 8's still good. Yeah. But considering the extreme negativity about it on Twitter, it is fun to finally see the reviews come in. And, I don't and understand. I mean, was the negativity about the leak, though, or was it about the game? I, I think people who were exposed to the leak really, really hated what was in the leak. And it oh, okay. kind of set off this just wave of, like, I don't even care about this anymore. I've just I've just seen it a lot. Yeah, uh, people like to hate things before they come out, just to hate, and then mm-hmm. that way, That's when cool. critics like it, they can hate it more. So, oh yeah, I, I'm expecting it to get review bombed on the user side. Oh, it already is. It's like at a 4.0 or something. Uh, it's funny because oh. the game's not out yet. <laughs> yeah. So, what are you review bombing? Nothing. Like, you definitely don't have critic reviewers who got early copies review bombing that thing. So. Well, it's just, you know, the day comes out, they'll probably just reset the, re- the, you know, the actual user re- reviews and be like, you people are idiots. You should ban all the people as well. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about the stuff Sony announced, um, you know, in a second here, but because this is the day after, or well, two days after now, um, by the time you're hearing this, I figure we should start with something a little bit more current. Um, so this is kind of developing. Uh, this isn't, it is reportedly a thing that's happening. There are people interested, but I don't see anything like official from AT&T about it yet. But AT&T is reportedly trying to fill their $200 billion debt by continuing to sell off things that are being deemed non-essential. They deemed DirecTV non-essential, so they cut ties with that. I, I agree with that. <laughs> uh, oh, I agree with that sure. too. I, I mean, there's still a lot of people that buy satellite TV, I guess, but whatever. Uh, so WB Interactives, all of the Crazy. studios included in that are up for sale, which includes Rocksteady. Of course, that means, that doesn't mean that they would get the Batman Arkham license. Of course, that's owned by DC Comics. So, uh, you know, they would have to get the license again. Uh, but this also includes NetherRealm and the Avalanche Studio that is not, um, the Square Enix one. Uh, so, uh, NetherRealm, of course, is, uh, Injustice and Mortal Kombat, if you don't know the name off your head. So, think about that. If the supposedly inquiring minds of Take Two, EA, and Activision Blizzard if one of those companies, which I'm hoping is Take Two at this point, because they're probably the lesser of the three evils, um, I, 
I guess, what do you think about, do you think there's a chance that all, all three, or, you know, the, do they sell this off piecemeal, like, you know, THQ did, or do we see, like, the whole thing just gets taken by one company? It probably, it's probably too expensive for it to be taken by one company. <laughs> I, it, like, uh, Randy, do you, I mean, I don't know how much, I mean, I guess everybody cares about, uh, you know, the Arkham games or whatnot, but, like, what do you think? Obviously, this is a shocking thing to hear mm-hmm. about, and especially, you know, we're talking about games that make money. Right, absolutely, and I, I honestly, I think the way things are going, I know you're talking about Take or Take Two and all these things. What about Microsoft or Sony? Both of them are buying up companies left they, and right to make first-party games. They, Man, this imagine, would be a big company. Yeah, and Warner Bros. <laughs> makes acclaimed major games. If you suddenly Batman or you know, you know, the next game from the Arkham uh, developers uh, is an exclusive, that'd be quite a thing for either Sony or Microsoft, right? Yeah, yeah, but absolutely. it'd still be licensed. You, you know, you, you still have to wrestle with the DC that side point. of thing. Oh, right. sure. Sony has uh, Spider-Man. Uh, Unless Sony buys <laughs> I think DC. Fine. <laughs> That'd be funny. Yeah, I mean, they also wouldn't get the Harry Potter license, which the Harry Potter RPG is still being made. Wait, uh, so they wouldn't have the Warner Brothers properties anymore? No, no. They wouldn't have... Whoever gets this, right? Because Rocksteady technically has the Batman, had the Batman, like, right. license. That's the developer right. I was trying to think of, yes. Right, so, like, AT&T gets to keep that because they own, you know, the Warner Brothers, like, hmm. whatever. Film, so, yeah, but, the film property in the light Right, of, the film property. Yeah. So all the properties are not the comics, right? Uh, so, I mean, it's kind, of, it's kind of what Midway went through, you know, 20 years ago or 15 years ago when they had... Or trying to find like bidders and shit like that for their comp- or uh, for their old games, but it's like you don't get the license for them necessarily, or that's more like a claim. Like that was twenty years ago. It's like yeah. hey, you get the you get the you get the license for uh, Legends of WrestleMania. I mean, you don't have any of the wrestler like- likenesses, so you can't put the game out, but you got it. <laughs> yeah, and also AT and T would likely get some kind of royalties off games for a while or whatever do, but like, I mean, I. It's weird to think of, like, you know, Mortal Kombat now goes to one of these, like, big names or something like that, and what would they do with it, right? It it literally happened once before. (laughs) Like, it it still keep cranking up Mortal Kombat games. and I know, but I worry about, like, EA or Activision getting their hands on it, you know? I mean, I don't, because... Neither one of those have, neither one of those companies have a game have a, have a fighting franchise. Like they wouldn't. Right, that but out, I mean, we're not. Let's. I'm talking it's, it's about not, their. I'm talking about their practices. Like, <laughs> yeah, look but what they're doing still, to like, Blizzard. Yeah, but well, I mean, they only make one, or they essentially only make one game. They just have different rosters, you know, Injustice and Mortal Kombat. Well, like, technically, I guess op- they wouldn't be able they, to do Injustice because those are yeah, WB licensed, right? Well, you, you could probably hopefully get that WWE Immortal game if Take Two buys them. That'd be cool. <laughs> but I mean, I don't see like let's say Activision bought you know Nether Realm, they wouldn't do anything different with it. They already they already they operate on a yearly game, essentially a yearly game franchise as it is, or cycle as I it know, is. But like, you wouldn't think like like okay, EA is now committed to they're going to start making arcade games with their sports franchises, which they weren't doing until 2K was all of a sudden going to be doing an NFL arcade game. Uh, so, like, you wouldn't think that they go, oh, let's start doing, like, what happened with Mortal Kombat previously, where they all of a sudden there were these spin-off games of Mortal Kombat, some of them were good, some of them were bad. Uh, you know, do you think they start, like, kind of whoring out the franchise a little bit more, because they want to get more out of that, and then necessarily kind of waters down, you know, these games? That's what I'm saying I'm worried about, more say, you know. They yeah. could. I don't see them doing that, though. <laughs> Everyone wants that Scorpion Sub-Zero game, though, so who knows? We might well, finally get Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks HD. Yeah, I mean, and uh, how would this work with the... Don't they publish the the Lego games, too? Yeah, like, so the Lego games would go... Well, they own Traveler's yeah. Tales. I mean, they make, yeah. you know, they make them, so... It wouldn't yeah. ma- you know, that, would, that wouldn't matter. Yeah, I, and, I did, and we're talking about the avalanche that made Disney Infinity, by the way. So just letting uh, people that yeah, but, didn't know what I, I mean, meant the first time. They're barely around, and they're barely yeah. left. So I mean, I, you yeah. see this, you see this as like somewhat doom and gloom, and I just see it as like, well, 
most of these companies don't have fighting franchise. Like the company that would scare me to get it would be like Capcom, you know, obviously, or like Namco. Is like they're in I don't think they company. would though. They're I think but the also, reason why you're seeing like Western companies be the ones that are interested right now is because I don't know the Japanese companies would know what to do with. But I also yeah. you bring up Sony and Microsoft. They're about the only two companies I could think of that have enough money to buy them. Well, buy it completely. They could buy them separately. Yeah, but they just want every or want the want the good parts. <laughs> Let's say that. Yeah. yeah. So looking at, I mean, uh, was it a is Avalanche monolith? part of this thing? Yeah, Avalanche, the one that made Disney Infinity Mad Max. is part of it. No, no, Mad that's Max, yeah. no, no. Mad Max is this the Just Cause guys still. Yeah, is that not Avalanche? Yeah. No, that, there's two that's different That's the avalanches. other Avalanche. Oh, okay. Because, because they want to make it easy for you. Which is the one that, that took over Midgar? <laughs> uh, uh, that's the other Avalanche. The, uh, the other, God, other there's Avalanche. There's so many. Uh, well, also, a Monolith is the ones that made the Middle Earth games. So, mm-hmm. there's that, too. I don't know if that would mean that they could still make Middle Earth games after that, but... Well, I mean, after that last one, you don't think they're going to be making any more of those, so... Yeah, I I mean... Also, I mean, you brought up, like, Rocksteady, and it's like, yeah, they're a good developer, but they haven't made shit in four years? There's... They still, you know... Greg keep Miller still like, keeps... Well, they, keep, they keep looking like, oh, we got a bat, we have a Batman project, we have a secret project. It's like, until you show something, I don't care what you're, what you're saying. Like, you Yeah, know, I wonder what years. that means. Is that going to get put on hold? That like, Batman there, project they teased. Aren't there also rumors they're make they're finally gonna make a good uh, Superman game and that fell through or that felt like a rumor that people were just wanting to happen for a long yeah. time. And I mean, Arkham Knight came out in twenty in two thousand fifteen. Like even if they announce something now, it's not gonna be like oh it's out tomorrow. It's like no, it'll be out in a year or two. Like and I don't car- I don't car- count Arkham VR as a game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I so. I, I do think that there's a chance that it'd be crazy if, say, like, I just don't think Sony would do it. Like, I think Sony's I, fine with what they're, they I, got. I could, I could see them more doing it than Microsoft because Microsoft went on that huge spree last year and Sony's not, like, great for money, but they could see it as, like, oh, like one upmanship or go, like, we have not, not a lot of developers too. <laughs> well, I could definitely see Microsoft saying, oh, Let's go grab some of these where we know that they're going to make games that will sell. Like, I mean, they're getting to make some money off of Minecraft because they, they bought that, you know? Um, so I don't know. It, it's going to be interesting who winds up, you know, fitting the bill for this and how many studios go where. But yeah, it, I just thought it was interesting. Like, it was just kind of shocking. I'm like, wow. Everybody was sitting here talking about, oh, we're waiting for the Batman game, we're waiting for the Batman game, or whatever WB's going to show. They were going to have a press conference at E3 at one point. You don't think that there might be some deal where they can retain the license for a while, even if they're no longer officially with AT&T? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, sure they'll come that, up with something. Yeah, like I'm sure yeah. that's like probably one of the deals is like, we get, we get the rights to make Batman for the next 10 years or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it'd be like the EA deal, right? Like, you guys can keep making the Batman games, just we get, we get a big chunk. Mm -hmm. You know? So, yeah, just figured I would uh, bring that up before we, we head into what happened here at the, the press conference. So let's get into that, guys. And before we, like, I guess go through what we saw, actually, like, general impressions of, of the whole thing, like, what it, like what do you? How do you feel after it's it's over? It was fine. They showed some gameplay, which was nice. Yeah, but there was still a lot of cinematics and stuff that looked like fake gameplay. I would and say just, sure, but it was like to me, it was like half and half. But just generally, like other than, well, not to jump into the games, but there's a couple of games that looked truly next gen to me. Like I thought Kino looked really amazing, and I thought the new Ratchet and Clank looked really amazing. Mm-hmm. But largely, these look like current-gen games, at least watching them on a stream where you're not getting the full, like, whatever 4K HDR magic. Yeah. It's going to go on, and you're watching a compressed video of it. It's, like, they don't look notably... They all actually, most of them look like games that, like, are cool, that I, that I want to play, and that are intriguing. But from a technical, like, as far as wowing me, uh, really only a couple of them wow- wowed me. 
Well, you mentioned Ratchet and Clank and that other one, but you forgot about NBA 2K21. I actually, I had the presentation well, on. Hey, in hold the on. What are you talking this? about? Like, that's the most realistic basketball that's happening. I mean, that, that's what basketball that is sweat. right now. Including, including an empty arena. How much developer yeah. sweat went into that digital sweat? Uh, I don't know. I, Zion, I, Zion I, had to really go out there and sweat. So I actually do have a friend who works in that on that on that franchise. <laughs> mm-hmm. I should ask him the next time I talk to him. Anyway, sorry to be so negative. What? What? How about you all? Yeah, I don't understand the negativity. I mean, yeah, I, I don't I understand that either. Yeah, go ahead. We, we want to see gameplay and all this stuff, but I, I thought the whole press conference or whatever you would like to call it, for smooth it went very smoothly. I mean. Where there wasn't a point where like here's 15 minutes of gameplay of this game that part of our audience might be into. I thought everything flowed well, everything got their own time, and now we're going to have the rest of the summer where you can get the deep dives of these games and, and see more gameplay. As I, I this is with me and E3 as I was, oh, I didn't see gameplay. It's like these are just announcements and and hype videos right. and and trailers basically. So I mean, you're going to get more in-depth looks of this. It's not the only time we're going to see these games. So I yeah. I thought it, it flowed really well. They showed a lot of stuff. I agree with the ends. It's going to be interesting once more of the 4K trailers and stuff start coming out and, and you can get a look at how they look on it, like if you have a 4K TV and stuff. Yeah. But like, I, I watched uh, it initially on my, my, la- my computer and like you're not getting the full experience and then when I watched uh, the 4K trailer of Ratchet on my, my 4K TV, it good mm-hmm. grief. But I, I honestly, it just flowed really well. And the thing that I was most impressed with was, yeah, there's there's games on there that I have no interest in. But again, they didn't spend too much time on it. And I thought there was something for everyone on that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I guess I'm one of these people that like almost a lot of the things they showed, I was just super into. Like, I think it really hit something for me that... Um, I'm totally down with almost everything that was shown here. I mean, Gran Turismo, that thing, I was like, all right, we can just hit the skip button on looking yeah. like we just made what this the... more like Forza. Great, cool. Okay. Doesn't make it better. Why does Sony give this developer, why does it, they, why do they give Puff it's only for historic. the digital? It's like it, like he said, but right? It's been on they, every yeah, single Sony console. They give them this huge console. leash where they have like a decade to work on a freaking game. And then you see it, and there's just nothing impressive about it whatsoever. I mean, if you're a car I, I, junkie, I guess it is impressive. But even then, they look like Forza. Forza gives you a lot more. Like you can like look in the trunk and and like look at every detail of the car and stuff. And he's like, yeah, we've got a camera circling around the car, and we've got well, a cockpit that doesn't look particularly impressive. And uh, like it, it doesn't like considering that like Forza has been eating their lunch for a generation now. The two. fact that or two generations. <laughs> I, I just do not get uh, this the veneration for Gran Turismo I mean, like, Seven at this point. The last good Gran Turismo game was like GTA uh, Gran Turismo Three. Like four was fine, but it didn't like blow anyone's hair back. And then five and six are just kind of like, eh, no, thank you. Yeah, like, and Sport came out. And it was okay. No one was, cared. Yeah, no one cared because there was other stuff. Out, and then and then they tried to make that one game, uh, that racing. Or what, what was it called? Uh, that fucked up uh, Drive Club, like that was supposed to drive be the, 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 like Gran, mm-hmm. oh yeah, the, the, like Gran Turismo alternative, and that flamed out like almost instantly. <laughs> That's funny. What was that game about the Drive Club? Yeah, Drive Club. <laughs> yeah. Um, like yeah, I mean, I can see, I know, I can see why they want to have a realistic simulation racing game, sure. But yeah, I agree with the ends. Like that developers had, you know, it's been around for like twenty five years. Or like like twenty three and like their games are okay, but compared to Forza, like the first Forza game destroyed Gran Turismo to me personally, yeah. and everyone since like there there have been mediocre Gran Turismo or mediocre Forza games, but they're not they're not bad. There are bad Gran Turismo games out there, and they're just not fun. like it takes like the WWE approach of like we're gonna have eight hundred cars in this fucking thing. It's like okay, how about fixing the gameplay? Well, look, that's look what they cars, were trying man. to promote, right? Is that the career mode apparently is going to be one so of the major reasons to play that game. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so I didn't even know we were going to talk about that for a while because I was kind of like, okay. Yeah, next. sorry. I thought we were still on general. Uh, so, but yeah, I know. Like, yeah, I'll go blame on. myself. Well, here, 
Uh, I'll just tell you guys this. The reason why Gran Turismo gets more is Gran Turismo Sport, you guys said, was terrible. It sold 8 million copies, so huh. they're still yeah. making money on it. Well, it's a, and it's a, just a historic franchise for so many years. They're going to give it all they possibly can. Yes, the sales make a big difference as well, but I think yeah, but- that's another thing that really stood out to me is that beginning montage that they showed at the at the start of the conference really kind of felt like it took that throughout where you got to see some of these like classic franchises come back from Sony. I, and you know, I, I actually really disliked that montage because I thought they should have just said, Hey, all of these games are back backwards compatible. They should have just dropped the, like, I kind of thought that's what they that. were going to go with was why they were showing the years and everything else. And I was like, Oh, okay. I feel like they are hiding that because it's not going to be very sexy when they finally talk about it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, except it's like one of Microsoft's big selling points, and Sony well, still doesn't. I, I mean, it's okay. They each company's going to have their thing that they do. Like, who expected? I, now we're jumping around. They want to, but like, no one expected for Sony to be the one that comes out with the the digital console first for this generation. Sony beat them to the punch. Everybody was like, oh, Microsoft's going to come out with that thing. Mm-hmm. And then Sony's going to be sitting there figuring out how they're going to make their one box cheaper or whatever. And Sony was like, nope, we already know what Microsoft's planning to do. So we're going to do this first. Like, so Microsoft's putting a lot of eggs in the backwards compatibility basket. And that's not bad either. And Sony doesn't like doing the cross gen thing. And Microsoft wants to do the cross gen thing. I mean, like, so I don't think it's bad that each company has their thing that they, you can point to them too and go, "That's that's them. That's what they're doing this generation." You know. Yeah. Aside from the opening game, every game they showed was PS5 exclusive or at least next gen exclusive. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily. Deathloop is not. I think that's supposed to be coming to. Mm-hmm. Uh, not all of them are PS5 exclusive. They made a uh, Miles Morales. Apparently, is not going to be either. Um, yeah, it, that did not look like a purely yeah, next gen so, thing. Either. No. Okay, well, actually. Like, they're, well, they had, had a lot of crap today about... No, definitely is PS5 and Windows, at least for, for right now. Okay. For, well, it's um, timed for like three months. Okay. Well, that's uh, what I'm but, saying, though. Like, some of that yeah, stuff is very thing. Xbox, like like what Xbox used to do where, oh, exclusive for one month. Like, who gives a shit? Like, just go exactly. on with the, you know... Like, well, I don't what, think... Yeah. That, that's what I meant by next-gen exclusive. I didn't just mean at PS5. I yeah. meant PS5 and Xbox. Yeah. Like, I, it's not coming to PS4. Let's say that. Uh, I thought it would. Well, as yeah. far as Spider-Man goes, uh, that's going to be infamous first light. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, was... but the reason why it doesn't say specifically designed for PS5 is because I think it is going to come out on PS4. Sure. Yeah. But I think yeah. what, what you're referring to, Mark, is the stupid shitstorm around that game over the last couple of days... About like, is it just an enhanced and expanded no, no. version of Spider-Man, or is it uh, like a spin-off like First that, Light or Uncharted: that, Lost Legacy? Right. That's that's that happened today. Yeah. But is it is it a real game or is it a standalone game or is it just an add-on or you know it's like who cares? I'll well, I mean, it, what do you mean who yeah. cares? It makes a huge difference. I have no interest in playing the first Spider-Man again with a little bit of extra with like you know another five hours. Well, but you know, it's not need... though. Exactly. It being its own game makes a huge, so, so I don't see how, how you can say who cares. Because yeah. those are two incredibly different propositions. I do like, get people being upset about, you should have been more clear about what this actually is. I mean, my, Miles mm-hmm. as a character has a few, like, alternate powers than regular Spider-Man, but he still swings around, he still climbs walls, like, it's not... Right, but it's all new content. Right, it's like, again, it's, they said it's like Uncharted Lost Legacy, so it's about 10, 15 hours worth of stuff. Yeah, but... And they, and they that, could probably that, make it longer. Lost Legacy is... Hey, Lost Legacy is not that much different from Uncharted 4. Like, Yeah, but it's it was, not... That's why it came out so soon. That's why yeah. you can... That's why Spider-Man Miles Morales is coming out when it is. It's, yeah, exactly. yeah, it's, it's not much different, five launch but it's game. all yeah. new. And that's the key. It's all new stuff, and it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, that's no, what completely I meant by like, uh, First Light, yeah. <laughs> But if this was just an enhanced and expanded version of the 2018 game, that would be lame. So I can understand why people freaked out about that, but I think it was just, yeah, the Sony not messaging correctly or messaging in a contradictory way. Well, you know what is an enhanced and expanded version of an old game? Grand Theft Auto V, and that was the first thing I got (laughs) shown. And it was a total... uh, 
<laughs> it was a total yes. It was a total like, oh my god, Rockstar logo, and then oh, Grand Theft Auto Five, and then we have to get you the enhanced and expanded edition because Rockstar is not stupid. They don't want to be giving that game away for. I mean, they're already giving it away for free on the Epic Store, but they don't want to give it away for free on the next gen console when they know you'll buy it again. So why not? When um, I saw that footage. I thought that they were going to do like a little bait and switch where it was like, this is what it used to look like. And now here's the new Grand Theft Auto V. And then it never happened. Oh, they did that. They already shot that one last time from PS3 to PS4. Yeah, but there's like, this is now going to be a two generations old game and it still looks fine, but now, it's not an, it's not an impressive thing that you should open your conference now, with. I would say it actually is looking kind of aged at this point. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, but I mean, it it looks fine for what it is, but it's again, it's a for what it is. So yeah, you're gonna put this at the top of your PS5 conference. Uh, no, yeah. yeah, at the opening of it, like, <laughs> it's like, what what are you guys doing? Like, I don't care if it's a joke or not. It wasn't funny. Let's say that. Oh yeah, a lot of people were. <laughs> that a lot of people were like, yes, GTA Six, and then oh, I mean, it's okay. finally <laughs> agent. But it smacked of when Square, like this was a few years ago, came out for the PS4 conference and were like, Final Fantasy VII's back, and it was the old one. It was like, you idiots. Uh, oh, yeah, that's it's, right. I forgot about that. Yeah, It's still going to top the charts. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. That's I why mean, they do it. Sure. Yeah. No, go ahead, Mark. I'm sorry. No, yeah, it was just, you know, I disliked that. Let's say that. But, yeah, it'll sell because they're not going to have an upgrade upgrade tree for that game at all. You know that. So, Well, but they are giving GTA Online for free when you buy the game. If you buy the game on PS5 and you get 1 million uh, GTA cash for every month uh, while you're waiting for that to come out. Which is, like, which is now worth like a dollar, you know, because it's currency so devalued in that game. <laughs> yeah. So th- there was that the the one kind of old thing that they showed. We talked about Spider Man. I, I think uh, I saw someone talk about there are only two other games that cross generations like that. that are so supported. One is Minecraft, and one is Final Fantasy fourteen. Yep. That are going to be on like you know, this PS five as well. Let's be honest. And like it's like I yeah I can't think of any other games that are like that. It started off Destiny. on Destiny. Like, 360 and PS... No, Destiny. <laughs> no, not Destiny. They shut that one down. Well, Destiny 2 is going to... Yeah, well, that's it's a different game. <laughs> yeah, it's literally a different game. Yeah. yeah. So you're still thinking about, like, the original plan for Destiny, where it was going to be one game that they were going to support over a decade. Well, yeah. Now they're trying to do that with Destiny 2, though. So that's... Yeah. At, at least. You know, it, it took getting away from Activision to finally be able to realize that dream, but hey. You know, maybe Blizzard will one day be able to do that again. Who knows? Nope. Uh, I think it also took getting away from the terrible compilers. Wasn't that the big issue with Destiny? With yeah, like doing anything in Destiny that it would take up, took like yeah. days to compile any changes? Yeah. Well, yeah, but most of that was Activision didn't want it to be an MMO. They wanted it to be this action game that had expansions so they can keep selling. And then Bungie was like, no, let's get away from this and not kill our game. And now they're understanding that we should just have content drops and you don't have to keep buying different games constantly. But uh, that's another point entirely. Uh, yeah, so sorry. we talked about Spider-Man, uh, the controversy around it. Uh, it's going to be awesome just to play as Miles. Uh, that trailer looked great. Um, so I, I love the uh, people putting the actual song from the the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, into the trailer. Yeah, yeah. I, I really thought it was going to be Spider Verse branded at first because they even one of the opening shots is like very when he's swinging around the city is very close to how mm-hmm. they opened the trailer for Spider Verse. So let me. I guess here's a question: Do you think they use that version of Spider Man, like that or that version of Miles, or it looks like, like, like the suit? Clip? Right? No. It looks like the same suit. No, it's not. No, it's, it's not. not. It's dark. Okay. Yeah. I'm just remembering. Do you think? This. Do you think they have basically like? Spider, like original Spider-Man, still being alive and like being a mentor, or is it just going to be a completely different universe? Whatever. Uh, I mean, I think it's probably still going to be alternate because they're not going to kill off the main Spider-Man that they're going to do Spider-Man Two with, presumably, yeah. right? Like this yeah. is a stopgap game for a proper sequel. Yeah, yeah, that's, I, that, that's what I think too. Or they'll still have like Spider-Man or uh, his cop girl, cop lady, friend, or whatever, yeah. or 
you know, some of those characters, like sure. I think they just like to, you know, you want to associate with that movie because that's such a beloved and acclaimed movie. Yeah. And it makes sense aesthetically. Right, but I think they also, in a way, want to keep those two things separate too. So somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. There's that. I, I um, agree. I, I think it'll be its own. It's it'll still be its own universe. I don't think it'll actively tie into Spider Verse. That'd be kind of. I mean, if they do that, that'd be crazy. Still cool that it's going to be either a launch game or very close to launch game. And Insomniacs not only doing that, they brought back Ratchet and Clank, Randy. Uh, I'm so excited good. too. So good. Ratchet and Clank has a history of being like one of the most technically accomplished series on PlayStation. I mean, pretty much throughout its history. It was the best looking game on PS2 at the time. It ran in widescreen 480p, looked super good, ran super smooth then. And, you know, that Ratchet and Clank game they did on PS4 mm-hmm. uh, is one of the most impressive PS4 games as far as the art direction and the and the technical performance. So... This is in keeping with that. It's really impressive. Yeah, and te- technology-wise, I think the trailer showed exactly what the PS5 can do. I mean, especially if you can just jump between worlds like that. Huge environments. By a button, and everything is all connected and no load times through all of that. It's going to be... Re- it just... I, I, I've watched that trailer three times now, and I'm still just... There's so much going on. I don't know if my brain's going to be able to comprehend everything that's happening on screen when playing. It's like, yeah, people are going to be shooting me. I'm like, but there's a there's a teleporting thing over here. I need, I don't know what's going on. And then you have to pick between all the different weapons. Ratchet and Clank makes my head hurt sometimes, but I love that series. Uh, one of my faves. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I don't have, like, a huge history of, like, playing it, but the ones, the time that I have spent with it, I've always enjoyed. And it's just, it blends that, like, great, like sense of humor with uh, you know awesome graphics and just some great gameplay that's that's fun and yeah it's uh, all it's I'm oh, sorry go ahead well I was saying I was gonna lead to that they the what they showed at the end that apparently there's uh, Ratchet is not so uh, rare I guess we're mm-hmm. we're gonna see a, a different character there I, I got severe Star Fox Adventures vibes from that that little twist. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, please. <laughs> no, let's not think negative. This is going to be a fantastic the one. The one th- I mean, I thought the trailer looked good. The one weird part was, like, the teleporting thing. I thought that looked a little odd. Like, it looked like, almost like a, like a web swing or something like that. Or just like, instantly, like, there. And I'm like, this doesn't quite look right. Like, well... I'm not quite, quite sure why, but it just looked like... When he teleported, like, zoomed in for a second, and I'm like, what's, what's going on? <laughs> you could definitely see that ray traced, uh, reflections but on like, Clank, though. The, uh, like, when he's, like, falling through the different worlds, uh, I mean, that looked great. Yeah, I don't know I mean, if that was, yeah. like, like, if that was, like, a sequence or just real. I mean, who knows, but. Those games have always experimented with cool new mechanics. There's always, like, one novel mechanic per Ratchet and Clank game, it seems, but, and I, I, I think the teleporting is really cool. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's exactly what I thought. I was like, oh, okay, they're definitely trying to show off the load time things here mm-hmm. with the uh, PS5 of this. Mm-hmm. And that was the first one, I think. Well, we got to see some. I don't know if you, that's really gameplay from Gran Turismo, but like this I, was the first one you really got to see. No, I, I think like, that was gameplay. Like that one race the guy was doing, like that looked fairly yeah, real. Yeah, but it's a, just, like, like mm-hmm. I know, but boring. to me, like, it's just so kind of like, it's a car game. Like, you know what those games are going to look like. I don't, you know, I don't really think that you, I mean, Microsoft's going to do it too with Forza because it's going to look awesome and you're going to get to see the detail on the car and all that stuff. But like, I, the only, I was more the only excited real, for Ratchet showing gameplay than that. Well, the only real problem with that Gran Turismo game is it should have been like Drive Club when that guy was on stage saying he wanted to fuck a car and that would have been, that would have made it so much better. Uh, well. Still on the Drive Club. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know about that, but, um, you know, that's it. I was going to talk about this, I guess, in the, uh, the impressions. I, one of the things that I saw a lot of people complaining about is that Sony showed a bunch of cartoon games. It was oh, very, but, like, I mean, I saw, I saw some, I think Giant Bomb, they compared to like a PS2 type press conference. I was like, yeah, go for that. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what I want. 
I mean, you can go for hyper. There's going to be enough hyper realistic games. Give me, give me the cool they art were, style. Okay, the problem is al almost all their hyper realistic games are already coming out. So like yeah. that, this is what they got in the pipeline now. But I, and I don't think that's like Randy. I don't think that's wrong. Like you know, they're doing a lot of their old franchises, and a lot of the older franchises are kind of. I I had know? someone on Twitter as like the conference was going on, and her, her this was her response. She was like, uh. What are, what the hell is going on with all these games? All the characters are furries, neutral genders based mm -hmm. or snowflakes, which Good is Lord. fine. But where are all the fast paced, realistic games? It's like I, I don't want that. I'm good. <laughs> I mean, I Where's get it. There's a lot of people that do want from? that, though. Yeah, like we have a character that we saw is a snowflake. Sackboy, well, Kina, the the cat from Stray. Who's who are we talking about here? <laughs> Alloy. And we oh, saw okay. realistic games in there. I mean, you had yeah, that was Horizon, like, and you had they're... Returnal, and you had a couple Meta, games that looked... Yeah. 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 I mean, I honestly, especially when you get to this new tech, I, I don't want super realistic at the beginning. Let companies yeah, let, have let a people, few years with the system, and... Well, let, let people be creative. It's like, yeah. I, yeah, I don't want, you know, I don't want Call of Duty Modern Warfare 900. Like, <laughs> I mean, there was that one furry game that that goodbye... Yeah, Volcano goodbye... Game. Yeah, that's oh, with the non-binary character that you, everybody you was... Mean, with, you mean Persona 6? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Beastars, the game, just make Beastars. Yeah, it's the furry game, it's okay. There's, that's. I mean, that's the... Hey, something fun. for everyone, right? Exactly, yes. that's the thing that, like Randy said, you, got, you really did get the something for everyone here. And that's what I appreciated about it, is like... Yeah, maybe you didn't get the like, oh my god, people were, were predicting this and it really happened thing. But I think you got some like nice, like surprises of nice, like bringing back old games and like taking games that already came out. And I get the whole, oh, there's a lot of cartoony characters, a lot of mascots in this. It's like, you gotta understand you're trying to get anybody that you possibly can to buy this system and if you gotta get the kids roped in or you gotta get the parents roped in to say oh i can buy this for my kids or or whatever or like the the you know um i, I just think that it's people are complaining about too many things like you know you're gonna get your sports games you already saw the driving game like you know call of duty's gonna come like like what other realistic game do you want? It's like, you know, you got these people got to make the games oh, first. I just don't understand like using terms like woke or snowflake as a pejorative for describing. Oh, it's an indie game with you know anthropomorphic animals in it. I, I, I don't. I think didn't like, see. I mean, aside from the animals, it's not like I saw any political platforms in any of the games. Yeah, there's nothing. I didn't <laughs> see anything here. Like. Is, did I? Did, was there anything political well, that I just didn't pick yeah, up on? Goodbye, the the goodbye, volcano high probably does have no. some of that. But the, still, the most wait. political game on there, the one that's just the most offensive, was Bug Snacks. <laughs> <laughs> that was I, man, I couldn't stop thinking about that game. Actually, <laughs> that game I, so, like, like, I'm so excited. Well, it's for the that. Octodad people, of course. Yeah, it's exactly. weird. It's like, so good. I love that. Um, but yeah, it's just that's the thing I did not. I didn't get about people. I, f I felt like there was a lot of people trying to find things to complain about when this was over. It's just like, I get it. Like, aside from the Xbox, like, lover people that just, we got to find something to hate because we need to hate to hate. I, but it's just, yeah. I mean, I have plenty of things to come. I, I was, I was not, I don't think I was either underwhelmed or over. I was just kind of whelmed by the whole thing. I was just kind of like, eh, yeah, okay. There were some exciting things, but. But yeah, I, I, the one com I can see it in the one way, which is that I, I think most of these games probably don't show off next gen graphics as well as you would but want. But they're not going from. to. We know that. Yeah, it, it, you just have to trust that. Like, yeah, there's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be fine. Like, there's gonna be realistic, like, super high fidelity games on here. So yeah, I don't know why you necessarily. <sighs> But I mean, let since since we went over the the topic, like so, Goodbye Volcano High is a like story game. It has the the furries and the you know cartoony characters. Kina, which um, that, that, uh, Jens that, that mentioned, looks amazing. That, that looked that awesome. Like 
It looked like Mark of Cree 3. No, it, the thing it reminded me of is it gave me flashbacks a little bit to cameo elements. Yeah, of power. exactly what I thought of. It's cameo. Yeah, where it's just like, okay, it's a third person action adventure kind of Zelda type game. It's got platforming. It's got like creature ra- wrangling. Yeah. It's got Pikmin. Uh, it's, yeah, it's got, yeah. it's got a bow. So, um, it's oh, that, some yeah, horizon in there. I, yeah. I was thinking of the other game that looked like Mark of Cree. That's right. What other game? But it like Mark of Cree. Uh, there was some game with the chick with the bow. Is, or is that the, is that the game also? That's Kena. Okay, yeah. That, that looked be. like Mark of Cree to me. Like, not, okay. not gameplay, but like visual style, I would say. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, it just, that is the other one. It's like, okay, you're going for, and I know that anytime there's any game that has a cartoony art style that is rendered well in 3D, people always make Pixar comparisons. But this really is that like as close. It looked great though. Like, it looked so nice. Uh, the little devil inside looked insane. Uh, I'm totally down, uh, with that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Solar Ash, which is sort of a spiritual sequel to, uh, Hyperlight Drifter. That looked great that looked too. Like Journey. Yeah. Yeah. It had, it had that, uh, type of cell shaded style. But... Except it looked, like, well, it looked like Journey mixed with Jet Set Radio. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you had the Return of Sackboy for a platformer. Which yeah. I'm totally down with. It, uh, it's 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 Mario meets Sackboy. I'm okay yeah. with that. And right. Astro uh, Bot got its own. Well, it's uh, nice that's coming with the system. Yeah, and that's cool too. Like, I, you know, Astro Bot still probably the best VR game. So you know, I'm down with it getting its own little platformer as well. And uh, what other thing was uh, Bug Snacks that we talked about, which is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Like, so that, that seems, what do we think that is? That seems like a game where you have to acquire a new ability by evolving and you evolve by eating other things and kind of picking up their yeah. traits. Yes. I would, I would think. Like yeah. Adamari Damasi. <laughs> mm-hmm. It seems, and it has a, that catchy ass theme song. Uh, <laughs> it's so good. I'm playing that game. Can, can any of you guys ex- try to explain what Stray is going to be? I mean, I guess I you're, think a you're cat. the cat. Backpack I, running around. In the I, world of I, I imagine, because there are, like, signs in the game that say, like, no humans left or something like that. Either the cat is, like, like the pet of, like, the last human, or... Oh, you've got to get, like, food and stuff for him? Or the last human somehow, like, put its brain in the cat. Huh. Interesting. Like, I, yeah, and, you know, it, it, I think it'll kind of be, like, a stealth game, essentially, also. Hmm. Like, maybe it's, like, yeah. stealth, maybe like, slash survival, but, like, it's not going to be, like, an adventure game, or a, you don't, like you don't think this is going to be you platform through the world, and then there's going to be all this kind of ambient storytelling around you, all these conversations that are going to happen in the background as Probably. you're being a cat in the foreground. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. I, I, I just hope it's like the uh, spell sequel to Tokyo Jungle too. Yeah, it had a it had a little bit of that vibe. I do like the robot we... designs in that. Yeah. Oh, cool. I just those, love, those uh, angular love heads the fact the that we're cars. having a cat be part of a. You know, thing. Well, we couldn't, the, we couldn't, we couldn't get, uh, Bubsy 4 or Garfield Kart Racing 3, so we got this instead. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. You're right, hey, not since Tokyo Jungle. Xbox hasn't shown their first party games yet. We might still get Bubsy or... <laughs> no, man, they got Blinks the Cat, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Blinks the Cat. That would be crazy if they brought, uh, what is it? Like, Ratchet looks like a cat, so. Well, he's a Lombax. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's depressing that I know that. That's oh, depressing. It gets right. mentioned a lot in those games. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a rare breed. That's why it was a big deal that uh, the other one showed up at the end there. Yeah, oh, uh, and it's finally finding people. And then there's also Jet the Far Shore world that that looks cool. So people yeah. keep comparing that to No Man's Sky, and I don't see it. I mean, just because it's a space I, exploration I see, type thing, I don't see that at all either. Honestly, I mean, except for like exploring the planet, but it doesn't look like. I mean, they didn't show it going to other planets necessarily. I mean, like the, the vibe I got was that they're going for like an interstellar kind of aesthetic. Yeah. yeah. And then the little bits that looked like gameplay looked like you were controlling little units from far away, looking down mm-hmm. on a, an environment. So it, I'm assuming it's a planet exploration, get unit control type thing. And there was also the uh, well, technically it was already announced. I didn't know that it was, uh, but the Odd World. Coming back. Oh, that's, oh that's, yeah. That's, that's been around for a while. Yeah. yeah. That's a system seller for some people. Hey, that's, I'm down with it to have Oddworld come back and Lorne Landing was there to introduce I mean, as well. 
I, I like I like uh, Munch's Odyssey and kind of about that one. Like those, those old Oddworld games are real hard to get into. I haven't played them much myself, but looking at that trailer, it's just like, yep, that's Oddworld. It's still, you know, from the side. It seems puzzles. and I got a music video for you. Let's say we can discuss that later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's that's a lot of, like, nice little games that you'll get to enjoy. And, and uh, I don't think that, I think that that's good. You don't have to have everything look the same and... I, like what that's the thing I walked away from is there was a lot of stuff that I said, "Wow, how is how are we how are we going to find the time to play all this?" You know, mm-hmm. um, because I was kind of disappointed with some of the other uh real li- I guess you could say realistic um games that were uh showing, you know, I didn't care for Gran Turismo. I thought Ghostwire Ghostwire looked looks worse. straight up like a current gen game. That yeah. looked there was an old Dreamcast game from Atlas called Machin X. That mm-hmm. looked exactly like that, and that scared me. Well, <laughs> Here's the thing, though. I got I to do also... Gunfingers. I get to do Gunfingers at Ghosts, so that's a System Center game. <laughs> like, I, like it's not impressive visually at all. That's that. That's yeah. uh, it kind of back to my disappointment that I spoke to earlier, where it's like, okay, yeah, but I still am hella excited for it, just because from a setting and gameplay standpoint, it looks like my jam. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just kind of like. It didn't feel like the same game that we saw at no. E3. That, well, that's because the, the girl left. So, <laughs> oh, you think you're gonna? It's an, it's because Nakamura's no longer there. Yeah, yeah, but, it's because it's, just... it was third person at first. Hmm. It's weird because it's Shinji Mikami presented it, right? It, he usually yeah. he's usually well, a third person. Well, he's working kinda... on the game now. Yeah, he got so brought in after she left him. to to work on it. Yep. So. I don't know. I have high hopes. Yeah, I, I mean, Destruction All Stars, I think, is going to be kind of neat. Cool. Yeah. yeah, the fact that you can get out of the car as well and like kick some ass. It's gonna, it's gonna was... be like uh, that scene in Idiocracy. <laughs> I felt like that was, I guess, their sort of let's, I guess, as close to Twisted Metal as we can without being Twisted Metal. Right. It's like Twisted Metal meets Rocket League meets Fortnite meets. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure there would be a lot of in-game purchases that you can get for your characters and all that stuff. But yeah, it looks like a fun. Are those characters game. supposed to be from other games? Is that why it's called no. All Stars? No. They're okay. really different, or you know, just new okay. made up characters. Yeah. I was Speaking just of like, things go that could be PS4 games, Returnal. I don't think that that's definitely a PS5 game. I know, but like just looking at like the main character. Yeah, I, I would say. The main character is fairly derivative, but like I, I appreciated the different world settings they had. I don't, I don't mean the derivative the design. I just mean like the, for the well, I mean the, kind the, of the character model and the the world yeah, the yeah. environment. Well, stuff. I thought, the only thing that I thought was like derivative was like her having two different eye colors. It's like, yep. Okay, course. fair enough. And that's of course the Housemark game that they had been touting for a long time that they were making a PS5 game, and it's a third person shooter where you're an astronaut. And you mm. had to repeat the same thing over and over, but you try to. Um, there are a few games on Steam that reminded me. I forget what they were called, but there's a few games on Steam that are very much like that as well. <laughs> it's interesting that you get that game that is all about repeating the same thing over and over, and then like 20 minutes later they showed Death Loop, which is <laughs> doing the yep. same thing over and over. <laughs> and also oh, I love Death Loop. Death Loop is one it, of my. It like, looks good. I'm not saying it doesn't. I just yeah. It, it, they have very similar premises. It's so weird because, I mean, that's pretty much every video game is that, right? Also that game, I mean, apartment. <laughs> it's already inherent to the genre. Yeah, that's like, what's funny is like she's saying, "Well, oh, I have to repeat the same." Well, welcome to a video game. If you die, you have to do the same thing again. Exactly. Like, that's great. What <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's neat making it. I guess part of the, uh, mm-hmm. you know, in canon premise. Yeah, I mean. Uh, uh, Outer Worlds was one of the most beloved games from last year, and that that's a lot of that game too. So, um, we'll see. I I would say like Deathloop. It was nice to finally see what the girl was supposed to be doing because the original show that they showed at E3 kind of made it seem like like you either had a male or a female character, and they were just trying to kill each other. Now you kind of get the story behind what's happening. So that was that I was neat. Some- I, I got some really bad Dishonored vibes from that thing. No, it definitely that's Dishonored. It's Dishonored so that's, team. 
That's why I didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like Dishonored. Yeah, me neither. So it's like, well, I mean, it looks like a, it looks like a, like more faster paced world or like a different mm-hmm. world. But I'm like, I don't like Dishonored. And like the guy literally was like teleporting around, like, dude, and Dishonored. And I'm like, it, here's the thing though. Right. The, the thing that made Dishonored unfun was not the like wrecking dudes core gameplay. It was the fact that they wouldn't really let you engage with that uh, if you wanted a good ending. Like Dishonored was, you know, if you wanted no, to I, have the good ending in Dishonored, you had to play that game in the most boring way humanly possible. Yeah, where you couldn't kill anyone. Where you couldn't kill anyone, and you really had to just stealth around everything and do a lot of save scumming. At least I had to. Yeah. So I, I didn't like it. So uh, uh, if this is a Dishonored game where it's, you're actually encouraged to use your powers and zip around, and because you know there's some. I've seen some videos of like high level dishonored gameplay that actually looks really awesome, but yeah. I never got to play that way. Exactly. I mean, yeah. So I, I thought we'll the see. most uh, disappointing game was the first game ever revealed as a PS5 game, Godfall. That looked like oh yeah, my I don't god, know. that looked that bad. bad. If you wanted to like design the trailer specifically to turn me off, Godfall sure did it. Randy Pitchford strikes again. <laughs> it was like, oh, we need to have the game that has the dubstep and w- the stupid slogans while we're killing it looked, stuff. It actually looked like Too Human Two. <laughs> it could be fun if you, if you're if it's like okay, it's a loot, you know, action, you know, action RPG kind of thing where you mash buttons a lot. It just looked very samey. It's ironic considering I complained earlier about the lack of gameplay, and that was a trailer that was all gameplay, but it was all kind of the same gameplay. Every shot was you slamming into an enemy you uh, and I already, to the to the pace of the dubstep song. You and I played that last year. It's called Warhammer Chaos Bane. No, that was a Diablo clone. That's a little bit different. This looked fairly Diablo like I thought. A uh, different perspective. You're much closer. It's probably going to be more uh, action y in terms of its actual combat. You're not just going to hold in a direction and spam a button, I'm hoping. Yeah. But yeah, Too Human is a good comparison point. Yeah. Like a lot of yeah. like cyber Vikings and running around with like, you know, axes and no. sta- staves and stuff like that. I- I'll give it to Ben. Extraordinary weapons, guys. There's extraordinary weapons <laughs> in that game. I was <laughs> like, what? Really? Godlike armor. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, come on, we couldn't come up with any more uh, cliches to, to say? Well, Maybe? I'll give it the benefit of the doubt, because I don't think it's developed by Gearbox. I think it's just distributed no, it's by Gearbox. It, yeah. yeah. So, I, I don't want to paint it with the with the Randy Pitchford brush. No, it, yeah, it's not developed by them, but God. And it didn't look like it had the Borderlands. I mean, it. you could tell that, that was like the Gearbox had a hand in that trailer just to like make sure that I did not give a shit about the game. But it it probably doesn't have the terrible sense of humor. That most Gearbox games have? I don't know. It's claptrap, it will still find a way to shove his ass in their game somehow. It could be okay, but yeah, this is this is a bad trailer. Well, one trailer that looked really good to me, Hitman 3, mm. was really nice that you're getting a I, conclusion to that story. And I want to like those games, it's not for me. <laughs> I've tried, but... I'm just yeah. not good at them at all. <laughs> I'm not a fan of dealing with adventure game puzzles in the context of a stealth game where I have to be, you know, where it's like figure out these, what objects to use where, but then also while not being spotted, I, I feel like those are two, two gameplay styles that don't go together for me personally. I know there are people who love them and who love I, spending, you know, doing the levels over and over and over again and experimenting with every permutation and stuff, and I, I'm just not that guy. I, I think I don't like that either, and I don't like, oh, complete this level 20 times, then you get the really cool weapon from it. It's like, no, I just, I want to have the cool weapon and just go through it once, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Give me the sniper rifle. <laughs> I'll wait an hour for this person to show up. That's fine. <laughs> but yeah, it, it did look nice. There, That sequence where they're going through the woods and... and uh... In the beginning, he's kind of like looking over his shoulder and all that stuff. As the character model looks good, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm on the same the, business. The like I'll, nice. I'll, I'll probably buy it eventually, you know. But it's not I won't play it at all. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying because I'm gonna sit there for hours and hours and play it. I'm just I thought it looked really good, and you know, again, it's nice to see IO Interactive doing well yeah. enough that they're making that third game. You know, Randy, do you have any Hitman thoughts? I played the early, early ones. 
Uh, I haven't really played the newer ones. Not out of disinterest. I just haven't gotten around to it at all. But I, I kind of like Mark where it's like the, the stealth games. I, I like it because you can be stealthy and then when shit hits the fan, it doesn't just game over you. It's, I'm replaying The Last of Us right now to get ready for Last of Us 2 and I'm doing that a lot. I'm like, I'm going to be stealthy. And then two minutes later, I'm like, ah, shit. All right. Let's just, <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, the last of us Hammer does not penalize you. Thing. The Hitman penalizes you way more for being yeah, spotted. Yeah, well, it, it, the original, at least the, the older ones, it was. I mean, you wouldn't get the bonuses and stuff, but it wouldn't game over you, and you you could shoot your way out and go hide again. You can still do the same thing, but then it's like, yeah, you get you get no score or, or you yeah. know. And I but, I didn't play the ones that now have scores and and base yeah. stuff like that. Now but. there's like a, now there's like a million ways to kill a person, or you know, you can inject their food with poison or cause a chandelier to fall on them, and it's like, all right, I guess, but... That stuff's so cool in theory. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you really like to get into the strategy of that and, like, mm-hmm. thinking about how you want to do it, I think it, oh, yeah. it's good. And it's definitely one of those games, I think, that for the people that do get into it, that's their their main game for the whole year. I mean... Yeah. Oh, no, there is so people that absolutely that spent yeah. hours, they, like 60, 80 hours on that game, yeah. And that's well, cool. That, that's that really support cool. that game for the whole year, so that helps. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, that also helps. Yeah, like you said a lot that they they supported the whole year. Uh, so two games that you didn't get to hear a lot about at all, um, but they kind of shut them for a little bit is um, and from two big uh, Japanese studios, Square Enix showing off was that um, Athia, Athia, project, the, Athia. Pro- yeah, Project Athia with the most cliche uh, words to go along with it, like. I mean, when the world happens, you know, what it's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, like, uh, it had some cool platforming or whatever, but when you knew what was going to get announced by Sony, it was kind of weird, like, to have somebody that kind of looked like Aloy as well in another game. Um, I, think it looks co- I think it looks nice. Yeah. No, I definitely... Uh, Those werewolf things look good. Yes, I agree there. Uh, it's Square Enix is probably going to be good. It looked a lot like Final Fantasy XV because it's that engine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's Luminous. Yeah, Luminous engine. That's their engine. Oh, yeah. yeah. But they, they're doing that to Final make Fantasy smaller 16. games. Yeah. Did we? I didn't really think that was going to get announced. Like, no, I was well, expecting yeah. Final Fantasy Seven Two or Seven Remake Two teaser or something like for end of you know 2021. Well, don't you know, guys? That that person in that. And that and that uh, game is gonna be Sid. <laughs> mm. Yeah, they could have done that, like that, right? They could have teased like Sid and some other people, and just been like, "Hey, here's what they're gonna look like." Or end it with uh, a Vincent reveal, which will yeah <laughs> make everyone horny. <laughs> uh, Pragmata also got shown up by Capcom, which was like just another one that I think they were really trying to show off the loading. Mm-hmm. With uh, the stuff happening quickly, and then they just all of a sudden go to the moon. I'm like, oh, okay. And, and, and more cats. cats. Right, more cats. And more cats. Got backpack cats. cats. And got digital cats. cats. That one was really like a virtual reality cat. With the... <laughs> the Death Stranding cat. I was gonna, yeah. cat. Exactly. I, I was basically just going to say that. I was, I was surprised I didn't hear the news that Kojima went to Capcom when I watched that trailer. <laughs> That, yeah, it was really weird. I was like, okay, this is gonna be that game that like you find out it has nothing to do with whatever they showed. Like, Probably. all right, <laughs> it'll be a dancing simulator. <laughs> the, I, I have a hard time caring about that because it's so far in the future. It's like not until twenty twenty two. Yeah, that's the one that was like really kind of distant, right? And that's the thing I also appreciate is like a lot of these games they showed is they're not that far off. Mm-hmm. So, maybe, or they did, that... or they just didn't say when. Yeah, or yeah, some of them they didn't say. Maybe uh, that but, pragmatic game is going to be uh, the, the Asura's Wrath 2 game. <laughs> or the Deep Down that never yeah. comes, right? And that was also Capcom. And it never came out. <laughs> so, At this point, um, I just want a documentary on what the hell happened with Deep Down. Like, just just let me like, watch a 90-minute thing. Nobody's talked about like, that, hey, right? The, is, is, there, is there something? Is there like, did, did Jason Schreier do a huge article or... Is there something I can read? Maybe that'll be in his next book, you know, when he's running right now. I don't know. Okay. Maybe. Uh, I mean, so... there, there, are, there are other games that have been in development for a while and shown and never come out, so... <laughs> I know, but this this is such a such an interesting thing and such an impressive first trailer. 
Yeah. At the beginning of the show, at the beginning of the previous, well, the current generation, you know. Well, deep Just down, like, I think it was like the first, like, new IP that they ever showed for the PS4. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so let's get into, like, the, I guess, the big three. Well, maybe there's some bigger ones, but, like, the, kind of like the, the stuff they showed at the latter half that was all <laughs> smashed there at the end to get you really hyped. Oh, um, we finally find out what the Blue Point game was, and everybody was right. It was Demon Souls remake. Great. How do you feel about that, Jens? Just inject it directly into my veins. I'm so excited. It looks so you great. Can, you can finally get the that first experience of Dark Souls in its glory. Well, on, people have been the... like asking for this remake forever, and it's still probably the best Souls game. Uh, I, I stand. I, I completely agree with that. That argument that you, you usually see, um, either Demon Souls or Dark Souls, kind of touted. And I, I really think that Demon Souls is the one. So having it back for people, for newcomers to enjoy who didn't play it back in the PS3, having it looking so nice. I know there's been a lot of consternation about the art style change because it's Blue Point, and Blue Point does as Blue Point does. You know, they did this with same thing with Shadow of the Colossus. Were a game that had lots of kind of fog and green lighting and was very overcast and moody looking, kind of ended up being, you know, looking much cleaner, much brighter, much sunnier in the remaster. Well, and I well, think it's a the remake. same thing happened. Like, it's going to look different. Like, I don't get the people that get pissed off when it doesn't look exactly the same. Like, yeah, it does want... look quite different. It took me like a moment. Like, I was chatting with Randy at the time and I was like, so this is Souls, right? And as soon, as soon as I heard the, the you know, the female, the, the woman's voice in the, from the, the classic Souls score, uh, I was like, okay, yeah, it's, it's Demon Souls, even though this rock formation from the opening looks completely different now. Uh, but it's cool to see the, the Tower Knight and that, uh, you know, those flying manta ray things, all those iconic Demon Souls enemies, um, you know, rendered for next gen. Which again, it, it doesn't look like super next gen to me, but it looks about like on the level of like a Dark Souls three or a, or Bloodborne as far as the art style. So I'm totally happy with that. Awesome. Well, uh, I still would never playing Demon Souls at the the E three that I went to when it hadn't come out yet, and it's cool to like, you know, in 2020 we're getting the announcement for a remake of Demon Souls of the Fields. <laughs> And speaking of injecting it into your veins, injecting the Randy's veins, that we're getting Resident Evil 8 Village mm-hmm. with the, uh, the 8 I'm, I'm, I'm done so in unsure. a way. I got I'm some... still so unsure by this trailer. It, I'm, I'm getting like Resident Evil 5 vibes. <laughs> like, we're going I, a little got, over the top, but. I, I got, man. I felt, it felt like the Order 1886 to me. <laughs> well, I mean, with the werewolves and stuff. Well, that's well yeah, that's, oh, I love that they went gothic. Like, they were, they're I'm totally I, down I, with it. It could that. be really, really good. I mean, but again, it was like with the, the new setting and stuff. That's what I got with Resident Evil 5. It was like, if I was good when you played it with somebody. So we'll see what they, they do here. Chris looks like he has eaten everything in quarantine at the end of that trailer. That dude looked like he gained a hundred pounds. Chris Redfield, what? He 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 looked a little chubby. Oh man, it, the, the twist is going to be really Jake Mueller at the end. But it looks really interesting. Uh, some of the stuff they showed at the end of it, they showed a lot, just really quick, and it looks really mm-hmm. good. Um, I'm excited, and I mean, we were talking about it where Hitman is not really any of our cup of tea, but they're saying that's in January, and you got to think Resident Evil Eight January, so it looks like. 2021 starting off with a bang again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, so is that really not going to come to PS4 and and all that? Like that, I have no idea. Yeah, I, mean, that's that, I don't think. <laughs> I feel like we're going to eventually get that stuff leak. We're still kind of early on. We'll see, but that's interesting that it's not even like I understand. Like you know, Resident Evil 4, we're well into the next gen, but I no, wonder if they will. To- it is coming to Xbox and Windows. Okay, yeah. Okay, that makes sense then. So, we'll see if uh, it's only those or, or eventually... Yeah, 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 so uh, that's a raid version. Yeah. yeah, their website says the next update's coming in August. Yeah, we're supposed to get more... I think a lot of these games are getting more gameplay in August. Well, because games comes at the end of August, mm-hmm. technically, so we'll see 
what gets shown off there. And I guess the the big game, we knew it was mm. coming, but it's it still looked beautiful, and it still looked, I mean, the most realistic-looking crabs I've ever seen. <laughs> hey, man, uh, the most realistic Lance Reddick you've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, that too, man. That He looked amazing. Like, what the hell? He always does. <laughs> every show, every show he's in, he uh, he out he out kicks his coverage. So, uh, Horizon Zero, nope, not two. Even though they show that there, so they could you could see on the the logo that there is a two. Um, it's just not called that. Horizon Zero Dawn, Forbidden West, because now they now they go to the west. Um, I thought that, that looked really good. Looked great. Mm-hmm. Looked great. I, I, I thought it looked good because, like, there were a lot of different settings or a lot of different environments. Mm-hmm. Like, Zero, like, the first Horizon Zero Dawn didn't really have a ton. It was, like, swamp, forest, and ice, and that was about it. And then they went further into the snow with the expansion. Yeah. So, like, yeah, this was definitely a highlight. Like, it looked great. Like, everything you're getting pumped about. The freaking elephant coming out. The Like, I, I loved all, a lot of the new... Robots they showed the um that thing from underwater or whatever that looked amazing. Crocodile. Like that. Yeah. I mean they have it they have it before also, I think. Still still looked cool though. Oh yeah. I mean uh yeah, I'm ex- I mean that'll be the game I probably the game I really want. <laughs> so that's definitely a launch game, right? Like that's the game that they're getting you to buy the system with? No, I they did they, I think they would have set a date. There was no date at the end of it, so I yeah. think it's a twenty twenty one thing. Spider Man is going to be their their launch the game. launch game seller, yeah. And and Grand Theft, trying to get people to buy Grand Theft Auto again. And <laughs> well, Grand Theft Auto is twenty twenty one too, isn't it? Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay, I thought it was twenty twenty holiday. And there was no, the some, only uh... two. The only two that they said were twenty twenty holiday was actually uh, Spider Man and um, uh, Bug Snacks <laughs> were the only two that I saw that were holiday twenty twenty. I'm I wow. still can't. Uh, I might buy that on. I might see how we get that on on PC if uh, <laughs> if it comes out way before the the PS5, <laughs> just because that game looks ridiculous. I wanna I wanna play it just to see how it is. Um, but then we at the end, which I I thought that was cool the way they did it looked like they were kind of like it was uh all wrapped up, and then they slowly unveiled the not only the PS5. But the PS5 Digital Edition, which, uh, as far as we know, the only difference is that it doesn't have, it's, uh, all digital. Uh, but it has the same specs and everything else. And then they revealed the camera, which that thing looks very small. <laughs> and then, uh, the media remote and the headphones. Man, it looks like an air purifier. But... Or a router. Or a router. Or uh, several many other memes that came out of it. I was but, talking to Randy about it. I think it looks like an uh, Apple device giving birth to a Sony device, like caught mid crowning. <laughs> it does. I'm looking at the picture of it. Who, who fucked who? <laughs> <laughs> well, Sony says that they were doing it on purpose. They wanted to make it look like it could be an appliance. It that doesn't. could be next. <laughs> well, well, like they wanted to make it look like it'd be something that you could technically have next to your entertainment system, and it not look like a oh, this is a console. It looks so. so here, here is my conundrum. Uh, I obviously want to get the regular edition because you know the physical media edition with the cooch because uh, you know I still want to put discs in my console. Well, plus, hey, you're you're the one buying the Ultra HD Blu-rays, so that's true. Yeah. I mean, I do have a separate. 4K Blu-ray player, so I don't really need extra Blu-ray 4K drive, but you know, it's it's nice to have a backup and just, in general, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always going to be, there's certain games I'm always going to want on a disc, so I guess I'm going to have to get that version, but I really think it looks bad relative to the digital edition. The digital edition looks nice and balanced and symmetrical. Yeah, like the the disc one has like a little fat hump on it on the yeah, bottom. Yeah, it, it, it's, like it's like a vestigial tail or something. Like it looks... There's a, there's a shot of them, like... It also it doesn't look good when you put it on the side. Like, well, it I looks mean, really bad on the side. Yeah, because the disc drive is on the bottom, and you think it'd be in the top instead. And it's like, can you, can you flip that? I hope you can, because... Oh, you don't want to put your disc drive upside down. That no, seems like a really bad idea. I Putting it on the bottom of the system doesn't seem like a great idea either. <laughs> well... The, That's where the, the heat goes. <laughs> right. The good news for me 
with both of these new consoles, both this and the Series X, is that I, I have a like a grandma style like old entertainment center with kind of big tall shelves. And this actually will be way more space efficient for me to put both of those con I can just put both of those consoles, you know, upright next to each other in one kind of compartment rather than uh, laying them flat. But I know a lot of people who are like, this is like, how am I going to fit this anywhere? And it is taller than I, I've, I've looked at the comparison chart. It's like another like five inches taller than, than even the PS3. Uh, if you stand, if you stand it sideways. Like you're supposed and to. And apparently the uh, stand also has to be used when you put it on its side. What? Not like the PS4 what? where... It's fine for didn't... airflow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. I mean, so... like some mounting point on the stand in the console, you have to like screw it in. <laughs> and then you... Do you have to have the stand on when it's on its side? I think apparently so. that's the yeah. idea. Well, that's I mean... the leading theory right now is that you do. It's so weird. <laughs> Well, I, you know, I think that stand better come with the fucking system then. That's all I can say. No, it does come with the system. <laughs> if, yeah. if it's mandatory to have on. <laughs> well, yeah, you, if you, it's, man, it's yeah, mandatory like, to have on when you put it in, they want you to think, stand it up, yes. Think, think will, about the PS2 and the vertical stand. Like, that didn't come mandatory. The PS4 like, like, didn't come with one either, did it? I thought, yeah, it did. No, I don't think so. No, yeah, you, you bought them separately for like 35 Yeah. But you didn't have to have it on. <laughs> Well, the PS2 you one he did, that was a fucking, like, that was so, that was so, uh, unbalanced, or, you know, this thing's unbalanced and not presented correctly at all. Like, the PS2? Yeah. Okay, maybe the first, I guess I didn't get a PS2 until the first revision. Cause I don't remember having any issues. Yeah. Uh, yeah. what do you think about the color scheme? I like it, it's like, I mean, it looks like that controller. I love that color scheme. Mm-hmm. Oh. The, the, the problem is, is like, what if you get that black controller? Like, <laughs> I just think it's gonna get real dirty real quick. They did mention that that's the launch version. That there will be other colors. So I, I would like I an all the, black one. I want the see-through one. Oh God, no! Transparent, transparent anything in consumer electronics is always terrible. You take that. I back. love my Game Boy Color <laughs> when it was transparent. Oh, purple, I forget that mark. Atomic purple. Uh, <laughs> so ugly. But you can see what's going inside, man. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't know that I want that I on the main console. At. I'm good with not seeing what's inside. <laughs> I'd be too worried actually, about what happens if I accidentally like knock it over. I actually have a custom uh, Wii like like see through console case. All right, so let's play this game. What does everybody think the price difference is going to be? Well, we already know that uh, Play Asia is selling yeah, the PS5 $700. for seven hundred dollars. I don't think Which, it's seven hundred dollars. It'll be no. eight hundred. It'll be six hundred. Yes. There's no way they sell it for more than six hundred dollars. Well, yeah, but I mean, you're yes, playing it, Play Asia, you're always playing Play, Play Asia tax when you buy from them. Yeah. Right. I, I think, mean, if if you're gonna buy any of these other accessories, you're already paying that. But you know. Well, what do you think? Okay, what do you think the difference is between the two, though? Like fifty dollars or hundred? Fifty dollars. I think six hundred uh, and six fifty. I, I think, think they're gonna. No, I think they're I, gonna do five hundred and yeah, six hundred. I, I would say 500 and 600 or 550 and 600, but not. Does anybody think they'll go under 500? Cause I've been seeing some people think no. that it's 450. That's a nice dream, but no. It, it honestly, it all depends on what Microsoft does. I don't think but, so unless you do find out that the Series S is like a lesser console. Well, it is. Then. No, that's the, what we think. There's not been a report that it, it's going to be. There's even thoughts that it's going to be a like, oh, just free to put the cloud in right now. People don't really know. So, I mean, if that even gets, that's the funny thing is I wonder if Microsoft was even, cause, uh, Phil Spencer, last time he was, he was talked about it was he said there is only one console right now. So they weren't even thinking about showing the lock card until way after Series X came out. So I wonder if this makes them rethink that and they go, oh, maybe we do need to show this now, you know? Um, that's going to be interesting when July hits. If any of what Sony did makes Microsoft change what they want up doing. Oh yeah, I, I, I mean, of course it will, because that's why they're both in the stalemate right now. Well, they're in the stalemate with the price. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> which I mean, I think it's fair, like especially with what's going on in the world. You know, the coronavirus cases are going back up with everything reopening, and people are still a lot of people are still out of, you know, not working, and. So, I mean, telling people that you're going to pay $600 for these things, you just watch a whole bunch of videos. 
I mean, not um, only is the, the, the coronavirus stuff going on, but The Last of Us 2 is already happening in Seattle. Yeah, that too. <laughs> With uh, the uh, president threatening to take action if the, the governor doesn't do anything. Uh, so, you know, it's, um, it, it's, it's going to be uh, one of these. I think they're doing the smart. Th- I, obviously, it's more about playing chicken with each other, but I think there's also that thing of, do we really need to know that you're going to be paying that much for that right now? I mean, also, I don't, I don't know that you really need to go out launch day and buy that either. I mean, you can certainly wait. Um, I mean, okay, who, who between the four of us, who's going to buy launch day though? Me. Me. Yep. <laughs> I, I can't help. I can't help. I myself. don't know. I just, I can't help myself. I, I, um, I literally. I didn't think that we were going to get a date, and I did not think that we were going to get a price when they we t- showed this yesterday. I still had Amazon open just in case, so I could yeah. hit order before anyone else could. And our, our buddy Robert Taylor was was telling me if they announce it, tell me because he was working. So <laughs> he was going to do the same thing. So I I, I expect to. But I, I'm also in the same understanding that yes, you should probably not buy a, a, a console at launch. But I can't. Well, so. buy a console and then buy a nice ass warranty. <laughs> right. Oh. Yeah. Oh well, definitely buy that warranty. Whenever I've not bought a console at launch, I've always regretted it. Like I didn't get the PS3 at launch, and then it took me like a half a year before I could get the PS3, and I still paid 600 for it, so it didn't really make a difference in my pocketbook. The PS3, yeah. I think, is the system that I took the longest to mm-hmm. buy. I think I bought it like two or three years after. I right bought like it. yeah seven years. <laughs> like, wow! I got my PS3 in like 2014. Like, <laughs> yeah, the PS4, I think I waited like a whole year. Yeah. And then the Xbox was, I want to say like three or f- it was like four or five months. The series for Xbox One X or the one the Xbox One, and that's only okay. because they'd already announced that there's going to be a Rockman Four, so it's like, all right. Yeah, I, I want to uh, say for the PS3, it was probably two years later. It was right around the time Metal Gear Solid Four came out. I can't remember if it was it was about to come out or if it had come out. Yeah, that was like 2008, I think. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be really. I mean, I think. I don't think Microsoft's, I still think Microsoft's not going to show price on, in July either. They're bold enough to maybe do it because I guess they know now that basically Sony admitted that we know our console's going to be expensive. But I don't know. I wonder, I think by August, Sony has to reveal because I don't think you can go into the fall season and not have the no. prices for these things and they're going to come out in November. So. But yeah, it, this was, I guess I enjoyed the show a lot more than Jens and Mark and I thought Randy's it was fine. With, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I, I thought it was like really good. I, it wasn't like, oh my God, melt your face or whatever, no, no, but no. I think, you know, it, for it, what they showed and they showed the console and, you know. As I said, there were like three or four really impressive looking games and then about half of them looked like games I wanted to play. So yeah, it was it fun. Got, it, yeah, it got the job done. I, I, to me, w- with these kind of press conferences, I just don't want like time wasted. And <laughs> I don't think they did. It was it was trailer, and then sometimes you'd get a twenty second talk from their developer, and mm-hmm. then maybe you would see a little gameplay after it on some, and others we just go right on to the next game. I thought they, they I like those cool well. transitions with the. Oh, there were so many. I, I actually watched the the kind of funny. Uh, uh I, them uh, you the party, watch along, yeah, the watch along of live. I was watching it with them, and they every time they a new transition would hit, they would just go, "How much money do they spend on yeah, one I, guy?" There's probably one guy that did all of these, and uh, there was a different one every time. I was watching the uh, Giant Bomb watch along, and there, and every time they popped up, Jeff would go, "Well, you see, the cross represents no." <laughs> The circle represents <laughs> yes. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> All right, well. It'll always be the X button to me. I don't care. Yeah, it's the X button. I, I'm a stupid American. I ain't changing. It's the X triangle square and circle. That's it for me. I don't... Uh, but, but either way. You need heart um, to fully, you need heart to fully, uh, summon Captain Planet, though. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we'll see. Uh, I guess this PC gaming show does uh, have Atlas come on and announce uh, Persona 5, 4 Golden coming to PC. And then after that... Um, yeah. I just wanted to come to... Why, why can't it come to consoles as well? Because there's a... I guess Sony has a thing right now. Like, what consoles? Well, I mean, the it, it, Switch? It's PS, there's it's no reason. PS, PS4, because there's already yeah. a Vita emulator. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it base it runs on it runs on Vita TV. It runs on like there's nothing. There's no touchscreen stuff in it. I don't there's know. Maybe they're gonna. Maybe they're from, waiting for PS5 to do that. It'd be cool. But then at some point it's like, well, these you're gonna have to upres or upscale these assets. I mean, that's what I was talking about, like, last time. Like, those assets aren't great. <laughs> yeah. But still, I mean, you just put it on the store. And you can... It's no different than running, you know, I, I can... No, don't. Don't run put it on a PS2 store. game on my PS4 and... Put it on well, PlayStation Now and make people get it. There are there are already mm-hmm. games from the Vita on PS4, like, Lum- uh, Lumine yeah, exactly. and, I think, Loco Roco, or, like, Parappa the yeah, Rapper. Yeah, right? Pat Upon, and all that. I wonder yeah. if they can redraw, like, I wonder how much of the art they've got in Vector so they can just re-output it at a higher resolution. It's already a little bit weird when you look at Persona 5 The Royal, which is a fantastic-looking game in 4K HDR, but you can tell that, like, okay, any, anything that's in 3D is uh, being rendered in 4K, and anything that's in 2D is being rendered in 1080. So there's a little bit of that disconnect already. but. Still, I, I just don't I, see. I think them... it'd be fairly trivial to put that thing out on PS4, or PS5. Yeah, I mean, I agree, but I also kind of think like it could be something if they're going to tout backwards compatibility for one way or another. I don't know how that's going to wind up eventually being something. Is um, yeah, I I don't think that they would spend their time with uh, putting it on PS4 just to have to then put it on PS5 as well or something. Well, I mean. They've already done that with like Final Fantasy X and X2, or Final Fantasy VII, or Final Fantasy VIII, or well, maybe they're waiting to see if it sells on PC first, and then they, they'll do it. They can't be that dumb. They, I mean, they can't be. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they are. Is it like they're gonna see if it sells, and then okay, we'll we'll put it on the other system. Like, there's games that people have done this with. They put it on one system, and then they go like a lot of these. Uh, games that they get put on Switch and PC first, and then all of a sudden, no, they do well enough, and then they get put on... Yeah, they aren't part of a very yeah. popular franchise. <laughs> well, I, I um, it doesn't affect me personally, because if I'm playing that game again, I'm just playing it again on Vita, because I've got a Vita and I love it. Yeah, I love I, I having a reason to use it. <laughs> love having a reason to use it, but I do have friends who are not PC gamers and are not Vita gamers who I would love to push that game on. Like, my friend David is a huge Persona 5 fan, and I want him to play Persona 4, and that's not going to happen until it's on a on a proper console. Oh. All right, well, yep. s- no, and maybe it won't be long, and they'll just announce it. They just want to, it's on the PC gaming show, and then it's this silently gets announced for, a week I, later I think, gets announced for PS4. Yeah. I think they announce it tomorrow, and they release it tomorrow. They're like, hey, it's out now. Have fun. Oh, I agree with that. I feel like that rumor is true. About it, just like it is. Hopefully the P the P three one's not very far after. Oh, that'd be amazing. That'd be one I might actually play on PC if they port it to PC. That is more of a remaster because that's an older ass game. (laughs) Again, that's perfectly fine on PC though. You can run all sorts of older ass lower resolution games on PC, and people are perfectly fine with it. Yeah. Well, it'd have to be the uh, uh, portable three Persona three portable one. Yes. Yeah. That fixed it. We'll uh we'll see what gets shown off there as this uh summer of gaming thing continues and then EA's thing and the cyberpunk hey. stuff and all that. A... You know, might as well re release Persona two if we're gonna That's what everybody keeps saying. Every time there's a thing about Persona three and four, uh they there's somebody that has a hey, what about these the older games? Yep. Yeah. Those so. two those two Persona two games are fantastic. You just gotta get these other ones to sell first, and then they would. Yeah. Uh, well, they, hey, they gotta give them a chance. It's gonna sell great. If you put Golden on Steam, it's gonna sell like hotcakes. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I just feel like... didn't sell that great. 
Which one? Royal, Royal is not selling her. So no. Royal was on the charts after being one day out in yeah. Was it yeah? April I, well, March? I was looking at the charts in March. It was seventh. April it was eighteenth. It barely beat Need for Speed Heat and Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Mm. And May and June it wasn't in the top twenty. Uh, it's Persona's never been this like we're gonna sell like hotcakes game. That's what I'm saying. It's just yeah. If, if it's no, sold like hotcakes, like everyone thinks it's going to, it, it sells wouldn't. well for being the you know compared, niche compared that it is. The, yeah, compared to the budget of like a Final Fantasy VII, it sells very well. Four yeah. is an incredibly beloved game with a no, no, no. stellar no. reputation no. that Again, people have don't... been itching to play. Don't don't let me get you wrong with the difference between sales and quality. I'm not saying no, no. I'm saying that I the think game's demand is good. there. I think there will be demand for Persona 4 because there's a lot of people who've heard now for years that Persona 4 is one of the greatest games ever, but they have no opportunity to play it. Well, no, I think that's the thing too, right? Is like Persona 5 has been out there. There's gonna be a lot of people that have heard, like you said, not just that, but also people that have been like. Well, if you like Persona 5, you should go back and play the other two. Or they played the dancing games that had, you know, if you bought the, the big edition for, you know, 99, you got all three games. Well, oh, where's the game with, where these characters are in? Oh, they're finally there. I can play them now. Like, I think that the, a lot of the people that liked 5 are going to go back and want to buy 4 and if 3 eventually comes or whatever. Um, so I definitely think there is going to be some cross there, but I do think that that's the thing is eventually Mark is right. They are going to have to put it on PS4 to really get that crossover because there's still people that they don't want a game on their PC, you know, or they don't use, they don't want to have a series in one system and then another system and then another system. And like, you know, so I wonder if that's why. I'm starting to think that Mark is right, that we're eventually going to get some kind of... Because that's going to be the question. When that game gets shown off at PC Gaming Show, the first thing people are probably going to be asked is like, where's the PS4 version? You know, so I feel like they're going to have to answer that question so much that there's going to have to be a definitive, no, it's not being made for any other system, or it's coming, it's just coming to PC first, or whatever. I don't don't know. But we'll uh, continue to see. Um, mm-hmm. By the time we have the show next time, that will both be in real. We'll get to talk about it. Um, I'm exhausted because yep. I just got working a, a nine-hour shift and immediately started doing this with you guys. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> just... well, what was everybody's? I guess to finally end the talk about the press conference. I should have done this before we started talking about the persona thing. Uh. I guess what would you game give it a grade and your favorite game of the the show? Uh, I'd probably give it a B. And my my favorite game is probably Horizon. Randy? Yeah, I'd give it a B plus and I uh, Resident Evil eight probably for me. Uh I'm giving it a B plus as well. I'm, with- I'm giving it a C. A C. God. Yeah. obviously my my game of the thing is uh uh, I, I guess I'm torn between between Demon Souls and and Kina. I think Kina probably has it just by virtue of being new and looking awesome. I think for me also Kina. That's a game that like really. There was a game that I reviewed like last year called Mages of Australia that I really liked, um, and that game gave me a lot of those vibes. And I really loved Cameo when it came out on 360. So, I mean, of course Horizon, but I feel like Horizon's the like. Really obvious, you know. Yeah. So let's give it to to a smaller and game. I'll fully admit, like I liked Horizon Zero Dawn. I did not love Horizon Zero Dawn. So while I'm going to play Horizon, it's not like no, the thing I, I'm the hypest for. I agree, but if I think if you and I play it together, that'll be a lot more fun. Yeah, supposedly that's going to be the big hook. Uh, that is a big hook. Uh, so hopefully everybody uh, gets to go and uh, discuss. Everybody's already doing it, but giving their take on the, the PlayStation event. But if uh, you have a grade in which you thought about it, you can always hit us up on the old email, w2network at gmail.com. You can hit us, each one of us up on Twitter at w2network at Randy Isbell at Aperture Silence at Humanity Plague at w2network for the whole thing. And well, we'll be back with another show soon. And until then, we'll see you later, everybody. <laughs>